grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a joy to be here with you today. I must confess, I really miss having you here with me out here in the pews. But for now, until the Omicron variant peaks and then drops, the best thing we can do is worship through YouTube at home. This will give our hospitals a fighting chance. Right now they are short staffed and the more people that end up in the hospital with a short staff, the harder it will be for people to come in with things other than the coronavirus. Uh, it may be that someone has a heart attack or a stroke and the hospitals are already at capacity. So we're going to do what we can do to make it easier for them by trying to lower the spread. We honestly believe that our COVID protocol is a very good one, as safe as we can possibly make it. I know that sometimes we, we fuss and we complain about our mask and we don't enjoy them very much, but wearing them turned out to be the best decision we could have made. Wearing the mask, having um, distancing every other pew, and trying not to bottle up together in the church, but going on out on uh, one pew at a time. But truthfully, we still kind of tend to get together on that porch and outside in the yard, maybe a little too close together. So for just a few weeks, we're gonna take that break. We're gonna let it drop. The numbers rise and then drop, and then we're gonna get back in here together as quickly as we can. Now today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. If we were here together today, I would not have been able to offer you an opportunity to come up to the font and touch the water and remember your baptism by making the mark of the cross on your forehead or your wrist like we often do. What I would have done for safety's sake is giving you an opportunity to pick up out in the narthex either a water droplet, something to hold, this is a marble water droplet, to hold or put in your pocket or your purse somewhere at home to help you remember your baptism, something you could hold. And if you didn't want that, then um, a river rock. I like those natural things like river rocks. Some of you might even have been baptized in river water somewhere. So that's what we would have done today. So for now, I wanna ask you to remember your baptism, to allow yourself, even if you were an infant when you were baptized and you don't have that memory that you can look back and you can see it in, in your mind, to remember it also means to just let it bring you back together, to remember you, to know that you are called by name, loved by God, and at your baptism, you claim the name Christian, one of the beloved of Jesus Christ. So today, remember your baptism. Our first hymn this morning is Gather Us In. It's number 2236 in the faith we sing.
second lesson is from Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed, and made the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you'd like to give to support the ministries of Carborough United Methodist Church, our address is 200 Hillsboro Road, Carborough, North Carolina, 27510. We thank you so much for your support. Acts 8 verses 14 through 17. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Is come thou fount of every blessing. Number 400 in the United Methodist Hymnal. <laughs>
a naming. That's ultimately baptism is naming someone a child of God. And um, it's... Who's the child of God? Well, I think we're all children of God, and I think baptism acknowledges that. It, that, and you don't become a child of God when you cross off a list of things to do, or even when you are baptized. Baptized, being baptized is simply a naming, an acknowledgement of someone's existing belovedness. I mean, when Jesus was baptized, he didn't only begin to be beloved by God when he was baptized. Um, it, it was an acknowledgement of his eternal belovedness. Well, he was God, but not everybody else. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, but I think it's true for everyone else. Not everybody's yeah. created in God's image. <laughs> Is that true? I like that you're playing That's devil's true. advocate here. Um, <laughs> but, well, really, I think baptism is, is an acknowledgement of uh, people's belovedness. And when we treat it as that, it's, it's, in the Orthodox tradition, it's part of the baptismal service is a renunciation of Satan and his demons and of evil. And the way I kind of look at that and apply that is in bapt baptism is a renunciation of all those competing voices that try and tell you who you are. Uh, the world says, gives you names like screw up, faker, fat, slut, addict. In baptism you're named beloved. Uh, and then the world, like demons, beckon with rich, powerful, pretty, right, but in baptism you're told you're beloved and that's enough. Uh, I think everyone wants to be told sort of who they are and in baptism we're told you are a, be a beloved child of God and we're told to renounce anything that says otherwise. And it's a really, it's, it's a defiant thing to do. I, I look at baptism as defiance because the world will always try to name us. And in baptism, we say, no, my name is beloved. <laughs> uh, so whether that happens when you were an infant and you are remembering your baptism as God naming you beloved, or whether it happens as an adult, uh, I think when we look at our baptisms and we think about the significant of our, significance of our baptisms, it's that we are named by God and that that's enough. Good news. It is good news. <laughs>
and you go to your doorway, to the entryway where you come in and out of your home, and up over your head if you can, and that door frame over your head, and if not, find another place to do it. You just mark it. I've got instructions for you. You let me know, and I'll send you those instructions. And it's a blessing to put over your door. So just let me know if you need those, and I will get them to you. Now, if, you, um, if we had been here this Sunday in person, you would have had those river stones, those river rocks, or the glass water droplet that you would be able to hold in your hand as you think and remember your baptism. And we probably would have together gone through uh, the service of remembering our baptism. We would have gone through the baptismal vows maybe and uh, talked a little bit about that. So we're still gonna do just a little bit of that in a minute, but before we get there, I wanna to talk to you about something that really got my attention today. Quite honestly, the whole week, I have been drawn way more to our epistle lesson. Well, actually it's the, um, the lesson from Acts of the Apostles from chapter eight, and um, I read it to you earlier in the service. But it is the one that talks about um, how the uh, Sumerian people had not received the Holy Spirit. When we baptize someone, we also, after they're baptized with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we lay hands on them for the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And that one just really stuck with me this week. And something I have been thinking about and is us as a church, the baptized believers, the, the body of Christ. I have been thinking about what it means to be the church and a disciple of Jesus Christ, one of the beloved, the baptized. You know, I feel like God loves us all, so please know whether you're baptized or not, you are loved by God. But thinking about these things, um, one of the Rachel Held Evans videos talks about how we are named as beloved and that's what our baptism is it is a receiving and claiming that name as god's beloved there is another one that rachel made that talks about how a church needs to become um needs to be way more like a 12-step program than like a country club and you may have heard other people say that as well. But she talks about that in one of her videos, and you know, we miss her dearly. Uh, we lost Rachel. Uh, when I say we, I mean the world. We lost her um, within the last couple of years, and she is very much missed. But she talks about that, and the reason she says we need to be more like a 12-step program than a country club. I want, you, want us all to just think about that for a minute. What does it mean to be like a country club? Well, what comes into my mind is country clubs are usually exclusive. They want certain kinds of people to be their members, so not everyone is included or welcome. Um, and, and I will say, you may belong to one that's different, I don't know, but in general, that's usually the theme, right? When you go to a country club, you don't necessarily want people to know um, all about you. You want them to see the good things. Sort of like when we go online, we're on our Facebook, and we, we, you know, we tell the best parts of our story. We put our best pictures on there. We talk about the good things um, in our homes and our families, and we might share a little bit of our hurt and pain or our brokenness, but we don't share it all. We try to keep a lot of that to ourselves, and we want the best picture of us out there for the whole world to see, which is sort of like a country club. You want to wear your best clothes, your, your best jewelry, put on your best makeup, fix your hair the best way. You want to present your family, um, your married life, or whatever it is, in the best light possible. Sometimes we do that at church. 12-step programs are honest. 12-step programs, people don't hide who they are. They come in 
and they sit and they share their hurts, their pains, their addiction, their brokenness. They are raw, they are real, they are honest. They tell the truth. And when everybody there is doing that, there is a bond. There is trust that is built. People know that they can share it with other people who are sharing as well. And it is a bond that we need more of in our churches. We need to be honest and open and raw, and we need to, to bond in a way that we don't always do. We need to be a place where people can be honest, where we don't have to be perfect, where we can share all about ourselves, where we can make a safe space for everyone to be themselves without trying to convince others that we have it all together. So few of us have it all together, if any of us really do. So, I'm going to suggest that as we're still here at the beginning of this new year, that we be more like a 12-step program where we are people who are willing to share and to hear each other's stories, not just the best ones, but all of it, where we can grow in our relationship with each other and with God. Because truth is, God already knows all of our story. But sometimes we even try to pretty it up when we share it with God. It's kind of silly, isn't it? So I have some questions that I would like for you to write down this week or today. And I'd love for you to just sit with them this week. Where have you seen Jesus recently? Where have you seen Jesus recently? When was the last time the Holy Spirit was so present in you that your breath caught in your chest, your heart was strangely warmed, and you were flooded with this powerful awareness that Almighty God was right there with you. And you were so in awe that your eyes filled with tears that spilled over and down your cheeks. When was the last time you felt the Holy Spirit that powerfully? Sometimes for me, it is at the strangest of moments. Maybe I hear someone singing something and it doesn't even have to be a hymn or a Christian uh, contemporary song. It can be the honest thing. And yet I feel God's presence in that in such a powerful way. There's something in that message that just catches my breath. And I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. How often does that happen for you? I say these things to you because I want you to pay attention. One thing I have loved so much about the book that we used during Advent, Christmas, and up until yesterday for um, the one that we gave you at the beginning, one I gave you at the beginning of Advent, it was my Christmas gift to, to all of you. One of the things I've loved the most about that is in the early parts each day, you, know, you have something you start out with each day and it works you up to where you go read the scripture and then there's some things to think about and then you come back and finish up your time of being in the presence of God in that sacred space. And off and on each week or over the weeks, it has reminded us to be in the presence of God or in the Holy, presence of the Holy Spirit. It has reminded us to put aside those things that um, 
try to get our attention away, that we would not miss God's presence. That is something I pray about on the regular. In my prayer life, I pray that I will not miss God when God is trying to get my attention or trying to speak something to me, that I won't miss it. And, you know, there are times that we're just got so many different things pulling at our thoughts. Our minds are just full of noises, voices, jumbles. We've got this to do and that to do. Somebody needs to be picked up at a certain time. You've got to order groceries. You need to cook something for supper. Something needs to be cleaned up. You've got something you need to get read. You know, there's reading that has to be done. There's something you need to write. There's something else, a report that needs to be done. And all of these voices are after your attention. I don't want to miss God speaking to me in the midst of all of that. So I pray regularly that I will not miss that. So I invite you to do that as well. Maybe that's something you already do in your own prayer life. So all of this is to remind us that as baptized people, beloved of God, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. We are to follow Jesus. And there are things, and it's not that, um, you know, if, if it's not like you're going to get marks or anything one way or the other, but there are things that we take vows to do. And so I want to remind you of those today. So we say, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. But if you do, then you say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Think about that one for a minute. Listen to it again. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him? Listen. And promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races, all people. If you do, Say, I do. Do not take these lightly. While there may not be marks in one column or another, these are serious vows that we take. And so, as we move on and we are <coughs> remembering our baptism, <coughs> excuse me, I would like you also to remember. Trying to, to find the words I'm looking here. Hang on. Here it is. After your baptism, or whenever you had that, as you remember it, then we move on to reception into the United Methodist Church and then into the local congregation. And let me just give you those words again. As members of this congregation, Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers? You know, I've been asking um, that every day at 1215 that we all pause, whether it's just for a brief moment or for a longer period, whatever we have time to do, that we join our voices together at least for a moment, 1215 lunchtime each day, and pray for our church for this congregation and the work that we do, the health of this church, 
all the ministries that we have ahead of us, that we pray for these things. So as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence? Will you be here when we are here in person? Will you be present when we are at home and worshiping on YouTube? Will you be present for that? Will you be, and I know some of you can't do that, but if you are able to do that, will you? Will you be present in thinking about the church? Will you be present to do the things that we do out in the community? By your gifts, will you give to the church of your finances, of the gifts God gives you to serve with in whatever ways God has gifted you? Will you serve? Your service will you. And your witness. If you will, say, I will. Witness can mean a lot of things. Most of all, I think it means will you share honestly your story? Will you tell people what your relationship with Jesus Christ means to you? What your church means to you? What the love of God means in your life? Will you share the bond that you have with Jesus and with each other as beloved members of the community? Will you share your brokenness, God's healing, God's mercy and grace. Will you share the love? Will you not let the differences people have be an obstacle, but let it be the chocolate sauce on the ice cream? Let it be beautiful and add to our lives. Will you reach out to others? Will you follow Jesus as we are all called to do in love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our next hymn is Down to the River to Pray. It's number 3164 in the Worship and Songbook. 